liftoff. If you've been watching the coasts of Florida, California, and many other spaceports around the world, you likely noticed that rockets are launching a lot more often than even just a few years ago. And of course, the more that goes up to space, the greater chance that we're creating more space debris. To get a snapshot of what things look like around the world today, we reached out to Benjamin Bastilda Virgili. He's a space debris system engineer for the European Space Agency, or ESA. At the moment, we have about 10,500 satellites which are in orbit, from which about 8,000 are working. So that's something which uh, two years ago we had a much different number. So two years ago or three years ago, most of the satellites were not working. And now what we see is that most of the satellites are working satellites. And those working satellites make yeah, a set about 10,000 objects. The catalog, which uh, is what uh, we continue to track, it's objects which are larger, five to 10 centimeters in size in diameter. In low Earth orbit, we have about 35,000 objects. Much of those 35,000 objects include old rocket parts and defunct satellites, but also include pieces of satellites that were intentionally blown up. A recent example of this was the Russian anti-satellite or ASAT missile test back in November 2021. This is a rendering from the UK Space Agency showing the debris cloud caused by that ASAT test, which forced the seven crew members aboard the International Space Station at the time to shelter in place for hours. Increasingly, more and more people are seeing this as an issue. In fact, a recent study from the Pew Research Center found that nearly 70% of adults in the United States believe space debris from rockets and satellites will become a major problem in the next 50 years. Amid new calls for more stringent global action, ESA committed to what it calls a zero debris policy by 2030. And this zero debris approach also takes in account already that maybe some of your satellite fails. So we prepare the satellites for failure and in case of failure to be grabbed and deorbited by an external system. So in Europe, we are taking the issue very seriously and we are really going towards a path where any satellite that we launch will leave zero trace after the end of its life. Or that's our intention. But Europe isn't waiting for those satellites launching in the 2030s to get started. They're beginning with a satellite that launched back in 2018, long before today's stricter rules were in place on how to intentionally deorbit older satellites. The spacecraft in question was named Aeolus, after the Greek god of the winds. ESA teams spent more than 16 years creating this Earth-observing satellite, that spent the last five years profiling global winds with its Doppler wind LIDAR, dubbed Aladdin. The atmospheric laser Doppler instrument used ultraviolet light to pulse about 50 times per second and measure both the speed of winds across clear skies and inside light aerosol layers and clouds. Its data helped improve weather forecasting and climate models, and consultant group London Economics also found that this novel space-based wind LIDAR system created a 3.5 billion euro economic impact. Towards the end of its life, Aeolus was also chosen to break another barrier by testing a new kind of assisted re-entry, one on a spacecraft designed and launched long before new rules on end-of-life disposal were put in place. A semi-control, we call it, a set targeting a specific region. So that's why we call it its a first, because it's really not a spot, but a region. And as you say, Aeolus is the perfect case because it's still active. It was flying very low. And what we had to do is to keep some propellant to do this experiment. And, and then we can show that this is another option to reduce the risk on ground, other than the control re-entries. Over the final week of July, the Aeolus flight team did just that. They successfully performed a series of flip maneuvers and controlled burns on the satellite and on July 28th at 2100 Central European Summertime, or 1900 UTC, Aeolus re-entered Earth's atmosphere above Antarctica. That was verified by the U.S. Space Command, which tracks orbital objects with the U.S. Space Surveillance Network. Bastilda Virgili says this method won't necessarily work on all the old satellites, but it could be a roadmap to prevent some of them from turning into space junk, a problem he says has been largely ignored for the past 60 years. We have solutions. It just, it costs money. 
it costs efforts, but we know how to clean it. So I think we have to do it for the future generations. For Space Flight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.